Day 23, Chapter 6, Page 77 Conscientious Sabbath Observance Our Heavenly Father desires, through the observance of the Sabbath, to preserve among men a knowledge of Himself. He desires that the Sabbath shall direct our minds to Him as a true and living God, and that through knowing Him we may have life and peace. All through the week we are to have the Sabbath in mind and be making preparation to keep it according to the commandment. We are not merely to observe the Sabbath as a legal matter. We are to understand its spiritual bearing upon all the transactions of life. When the Sabbath is thus remembered, the temporal will not be allowed to encroach upon the spiritual. No duty pertaining to the six working days will be left for the Sabbath. The necessities of life must be attended to, the sick must be cared for, the wants of the needy must be supplied. He will not be held guiltless who neglects to relieve suffering on the Sabbath. God's holy rest day was made for man, and acts of mercy are in perfect harmony with its intent. God does not desire his creatures to suffer an hour's pain that they may be relieved upon the Sabbath or any other day. Faithful in tithes and offerings. The tithe is sacred, reserved by God for himself. It is to be brought into his treasury, to be used to sustain the gospel laborers in their work. Read carefully the third chapter of Malachi and see what God says about tithe. The New Testament does not re-enact the law of tithe as it does, not that of the Sabbath. For the validity of both is assumed and their deep spiritual import explained. The Lord now calls upon Seventh-day Adventists in every local locality to consecrate themselves to him and to do their very best according to their circumstances to assist in his work. By their liberality in making gifts and offerings, he desires them to reveal their appreciation of his blessings and their gratitude for his mercy. Dying charity is a poor substitute for living benevolence. The wants of the cause will continually increase as we near the close of time. We are placed on trial in this world to determine our fitness for the future. None can enter heaven whose characters are defiled by the foul blot of selfishness. Therefore God tests us here by committing to us temporal possessions that our use of these may show whether we can be entrusted with eternal riches.